So I received a review request for Gorilla Drive. Uh, it's a simple plugin from Safari Pedals, which, you know, creates some distortion. It's also, you know, analog pedal. It again has like an analog interface with all the stuff, the wires and everything. So I opened it, I was quite annoyed and I was like, ah, not again. But then I read this. The features also include auto gain. You are welcome, Wietse slash YT Studio. And that made me realize that I never really explained why I like auto gain so much. So here's the story. So I have the, the plugin here and how a plugin like this works is by basically you're overdriving the plugin. So you're giving it more input volume. And if we do that like this, so now it's clean, kinda. We drive it up and we're getting more distortion. However, we're also getting way more output level. So we have to turn down the output Turn up the input, turn down the output, turn up the input. And we need to do that because of a few reasons. The first one is I was actually clipping my output. And the second reason is imagine I've already made a mix. Imagine that the channel that I'm using this on is already in balance. We need to recreate that balance again. And this is kind of annoying, definitely when you have a mouse, because you can only touch one knob at a time. If you are working with analog gear, you can you have two hands, so you can manipulate both knobs at the same time. And this is where auto gain comes in. Because if I now enable this feature, I can now gain up. But we're not hearing any volume differences, and we are really listening to the effect. So, a feature like this makes it a lot easier to just insert this distortion somewhere in your chain. Like imagine that you have this at, as the last plugin in your chain and all of a sudden you think like, hey, I actually want to put it higher up in the chain uh, before a compressor. If then the plugin isn't functioning at unity gain, so the output signal is higher in volume than the input signal, your compression is also going to change because you're getting a higher signal into the compressor. It makes life a lot easier having features like this. And I mean, we're working with computers that are capable of a lot of incredible things. Programming auto gain in there, um, it shouldn't be that much of an issue for the computer to process auto gain. Now I do understand that it is pretty difficult to program proper auto gain. And, and to all the plugin makers that are saying like, hey, I'm not going to include auto gain because it's, it's difficult. I just want to say to them like, hey, you chose to become a plugin maker. Why don't you make the best product you can instead of whining about the fact that it's difficult? Um, my job also has very difficult parts of it. And YouTube is the worst part of it. Like, oh. Anyway, there is another benefit of using auto gain. And I actually want to change the term towards unity gain now. Because the whole point is that the input level should be the same as the output level. And the extra benefit has to do with monitoring volume. So what happens if you listen to a higher volume music or a lower volume music, it's that your hearing curve changes. And this is called the Fletcher Munson curve. And this really made me wonder like, hey, constantly changing the volume control of my monitors maybe isn't a good idea. You know, and when I dug deeper into that subject, I came across the K system from Bob Katz, uh, which is explained in his book. It's this one, uh, Mastering Audio, the Art and Science. And what the K system tries to achieve is equal level monitoring. It, it basically says that you should always monitor at 83 decibels, measured in a certain way, and also adjusted in a certain way, depending on the rest of your monitoring setup and your room. It's, it, it's not the easiest to set up, but if you have it set up, you can always monitor at the same SPL level, as long as you're always outputting the correct level to your speakers. And this is something that I've been really working on a lot. And one of the things I've started doing, because this is the thing that creates the most gain for me, is using constant gain on my smart limiter. So what I can do right now on my, uh, on my smart limiter is I can, you know, gain up and do my limiting and not having to worry about having to pull down my volume and everything. 
touch my volume knob. I can just comfortably work with this, which is such a blessing. And this is why I find auto gain so important. Like, there is so much benefit to it. I can now clearly hear what I'm doing without constantly being annoyed by the differences in volume level. The only annoyance that I have is that I sometimes forget to turn off the constant gain setting when I'm bouncing, which is, um, yeah, it's difficult to explain to clients. Anyway, and the thing for me is just like, there are a lot of new products being made, which most of the times are just a new jar of snake oil. And there's not a lot of effort being done in the audio community, audio development, towards making life a lot easier for the people that actually have to use the software. And when it comes to a subject like this, it's not very easy. It basically requires implementation across your full DAW. Like it should be able to look ahead pretty far to calculate what the average loudness of your track is and adjust it from there. Because if you're doing compression on your monitoring to keep it all on the same level, you're not really hearing what you're doing, all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's not a simple subject. And I'm actually within Reaper scripting a few things to make life easier. But this would be something for a future video when I've got that fully figured out. If you would like to see that, let me know that in the comments down below. And basically that's all that I wanted to share for today. Um, if you want to check out the Safari pedals plugin that I used in this video, I'll link to them down below. And for the quick disclosure, I'm not connected with them in any way. They did email me their plugin and I replied with, hey, I will see if I can feature it in a video or not. And if you appreciate that, make sure to use my affiliate links. And when you use it, a little bit of your purchase gets kicked back to me. Another way to support the independence of my channel is by becoming a channel member. You can do that down below, unless you're on an iOS device, then you have to go to the YouTube website. And as a member, you get a lot of extras. I'll link an interesting playlist over here. Now, the last way to support me, and basically the whole YouTube platform, is watching more videos. So link an interesting video over here. Thanks a lot for watching. Keep pushing. And bye-bye.